good morning everyone welcome to the interesting round table this year in 2020 for the weather related round table discovering the green shoots friends uh, we are really privileged to have this interesting round table at this juncture let us try to understand what is new happening as a green shoots in the agri financial perspective so friends uh, today we have a very very privileged panel here we have uh, very good experts from various uh, uh, institutions who are joining us and who are really experts in their own field uh, let me just introduce you some of the interesting people who are joining us in this uh, session uh, today we have mr anil kumar sg who is the ceo of samunati finance Anil is a noted expert in the area of supply chain finance in the agri sector in the lending business in the risk management sector along with him right now on the stage i have got himanshu goel himanshu is the head of ibm weather business in india uh, mr krishna kumar he is also a noted expert uh, in the area of agricultural technologies and each one of them will give a two liner introduction of uh, themselves along with them we have got uh, uh, dr shekhar who is from the kerala government who has uh, single handedly spearheaded the uh, uh, you know the entire uh, uh, problems that have taken place to disaster in kerala is also joined us apart from him we have uh, mr swaroop who is the head of information technology at agriculture insurance corporation to give us an insurer's perspective and we will also be joined in by mr uh, rol uh, who is from axis bank from the uh, agri lending sector mr swarup saxena has also joined us gentlemen please welcome to this interesting round table all of you and uh, starting from dr shekhar i would request you to kindly introduce yourself just two liners and then mr uh, uh, swarup so mr shekhar a two line of introduction of yourself also uh, thank you mr babu i am uh, shekhar i work as the member secretary of kerala state disaster management authority um, basically uh, do disaster management <laughs> that that's what i would introduce uh, disaster artist fantastic fantastic welcome welcome to the uh, conversation uh, mr swarup uh, welcome to the show good morning and uh, really a pleasure to have you while we could not meet up yesterday uh, can you please yeah. share a couple of lines on introduction just about yourself and uh, what you are looking at i am ss saxena general manager in agriculture insurance company of india that is the largest public sector insurance company in india and primarily uh, insuring the farmers fantastic it is the only specialized in the country great i think uh, you have a very unique identity that way in the area of insurance and uh, i just had a conversation with mr uh, uh, saxena some time back and we had some very interesting points that we could bring up today uh, mr krishna kumar can you just introduce yourself just two lines yes yeah, so cropin is a ai and data led uh, agtech platform for agri businesses and uh, banking and insurance sector Uh, we operate in uh, 52 countries we manage risk and production on 7 million acres uh, more than 400 crops and 9000 different varieties are getting managed on our platform we are 188 people organization as a startup and uh, headquartered at uh, bangalore and we have of- office in europe in amsterdam so uh, this is pretty much our cropping anil can you introduce yourself for two minutes please right wonderful to be here uh, a very good morning to all of you uh, uh, in the webinar in the new normal samunati the entity that uh, i take care of and founded is an entity building a value chain proposition to agriculture the mission of the organization is to make market work for small holder farmers and because we are a value chain uh, finance company we work with the agri enterprises on the demand side so as to make the value chain operate at a higher equilibrium and work with farmer collectives which include fpos and species on the supply side of the value chain wonderful to be here and looking forward to the deliberation himanshu by the time you can introduce yourself sure babu thank you so much i think 
you've done a wonderful job to really connect the whole galaxy of providers today so right from a farmers interest to getting to a banker getting to a disaster management getting to the forward backward linkages and then you have a banker uh, who will come online very soon so i think there's an amazing galaxy of people and uh, you know and and in some way or the other we are working together so i think uh, um, there's a great forum to discuss ideas and i'm sure the people will benefit with this discussion today uh, so as we would be so thank you to bring them all together let me just start off with uh, at least the thing of the context of the discussion uh, we think there was an interesting press release from the ministry of finance and the ministry of agriculture and uh, there has been a very heavy emphasis even the prime minister has been putting on a heavy emphasis on uh, basically use of technology in agriculture and uh, he has been speaking about how analytics can be put into agriculture what kind of interesting possibilities can be done to better infrastructure or better better the kind of productivity of the agriculture ultimately the objective like i was talking some time back with rawl also is that uh, how can we put the money into the hands of the banker uh, sorry hands of the uh, farmer today and how can we use technology how we can use supply chain management how we can use warehousing or all those solutions that are possible to make sure that it is uh, in the hands of the uh, farmer so let us get into uh, first starting with a small uh, uh, perspective here data is said to be the new oil and the new gold in terms of agriculture how can the data or this kind of information be used innovatively as a fertilizer by the lenders by the insurers by the supply chain by the technologies and by the agri ecosystem and of course the bankers if each one of you can give one one liner on this it would be a great idea and uh, dr shaker can speak about how can this data be used effectively to reduce the amount of disasters that are happening so anil you can start from supply chain how it can be used and what do you think is the positive positive now as as you have uh, rightly mentioned mr nair data indeed is uh, the new oil because it helps a lot of decision making happen in an informed manner now uh, i i represent the uh, uh, funding side of the business as you know and more often than not we hear a lot of uh, uh, talk about information asymmetry uh, you know talk about not having sufficient information having spent about 28 years of my life in the you know in in the banking space and in the rural and agri space i am of the view that uh, while the information in the required format is not available information is available and as people making decisions if we have the ability to understand this information that already exists then we can make many many informed decisions for example from samunathi's dimension we we work with the value chain players whenever there are value chain players there are buyers and sellers and all of us know that the buyers and sellers are not exclusive and unique for every transaction there is a familiarity maybe a wrong example for himan to you even if we have to go for a haircut we go to a regular barber we don't go to one barber every time that you know we will be looking at because there is a familiarity between and between a buyer and seller there is a kind of soft information that exists between the buyers and sellers and the power of soft information is amply displayed by microfinance segment right and hence the social capital is one kind of a capital that you can be used that can be used as a lender to understand whom to lend that is one of the dimensions of samunathi's approach secondly this social capital is being built not because we live together because we know each other because we have seen each other because we are transacting with each other we are working together and the transaction history that gets built is what is referred to as trade capital that trade capital might not reflect fully in the bank statements that trade capital might not reflect fully in the uh, you know in the tax return so on and so forth but the fact remains that there is a transaction history that 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 is available and of course the banking has become ubiquitous thanks to many of the interventions of the government so there is a way in which you can triangulate the information that you have social capital trade capital as well as the banking history to arrive at an information and a decision making so i am a firm believer in the fact that 
information is available data is available how do you harness it to make information is left to the ingenuity and creativity of the provider of the service so that way the strides that we are making in technology and creating data will only make more and more products possible in reaching out to the hither to unreached segments scale is based on the loss assessment on yes, area me. approach basis we have the drop cutting experiment yes, done at the notified insurance unit level every season there are about 70 to 80 and even more than that crops notified in this season by the state government so the magnitude of the crop cutting experiments is huge every year around 70 to 80 lakh crop cutting experiments are to be done by the state governments so this involves the huge manpower because you have to uh, conduct at least four crop cutting experiments in every village and harvesting of all the crops takes place simultaneously that is uh, uh, for the kharif season it takes place around the october or so and for the rabi season it is uh, from march till may so there is a huge challenge so the state government they have or the central government they are moving towards use of technology in estimation of yield there is ccf developed by the government of india on which the feed purpose they record their observations and that directly comes to the uh, uh, paper with the central unit server so further at the time of enrollment there are huge number of farmers to be enrolled by the each bank branch in every season bank they to enter these details in the government of it from that total information comes to the respective insurance companies at present each insurance company has to download this information from the government of india portal but now government of india is introducing the technology in this field also they are integrating with the cps of the banks so that whenever bank is sanctioning the loan that loan that details will be captured in this government of india portal so that the burden on the part of the banks to enter the details for the farmers on the portal will be less and the farmers details can be available within the shortest possible time on the portal and to the insurance company banks have to upload enter the data then insurance company has to download the data on the portal and it has to validate so it takes time our main purpose is to benefit the farmer in the shortest possible time because we have a mandate from government of india to settle the claims within uh, 21 days from the receipt of the subsidy and the state governments have to provide the yield data to the respective insurance company within two months of the harvesting of the crop so because of this uh, uh, huge number of crop cutting experiments uh, being conducted by the state government and there are multiple channels uh, involved till the yield data reaches the state government because from the field level it goes to the district i think we have lost mr swarup right now due to some technical uh, difficulty mr krishna kumar uh, yes. from your side uh, if you can say uh, something about how the uh, you know uh, how you are seeing data as the new oil in the agri lending sector yeah sure so as you know we are Uh, we are uh, ai and data led platform and we uh, we always work for the porica value uh, improving the porica value from the farm and we believe that every farm is a factory so there is a production there is a risk there is roi you know and and this data has been very very opaque in this agri ecosystem now because this data is not flowing it was very very asymmetric and if this this since the data is very very opaque and people are not able to get this data for their decision making that is restricting the capital flow blocking the capital flow to happen in the you know agri sector the way it should be right mm-hmm. because the risk of uh, risk of underwriting is high uh, <clears throat> uh, you, uh, the cost of servicing smaller loans are high right and the, uh, most of the farmer doesn't have a transaction history so there are so many elements which restrict this flow to happen now 
in working in the sector for last 10 years and we have seen how we are moving from opacity to transparency so that we can uh, you know bring that data access to the various actor in the value chain whether it's the insurance companies or whether it's a, a bank who's trying to lend or whether it's a guy who is trying to trade on that particular crop right and we we heavily invested in the building the capability to predict every pixels on the farm irrespective of the farmer so for example can we predict the whole mp that on this 10 by 10 meter of the agriculture land which crops are growing now and not only that but can you also uh, predict what happened in last three years what kind of a risk was there what kind of a crop they grew how the crop rotation happened what yield they would have got without even talking to the farmer without even going and meeting the farmer right so okay. that brings your cost cost uh, down but increases your transparency of the risk where you are getting into and 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 we believe that if we if if someone solve this with the data this whole uh, you know this whole sector will become a different uh, playground for the businesses to go and lend right uh, uh, the flow of capital will increase and then and then the, and then the fate of the agriculture will also change dramatically right so <clears throat> and we have been working with the pmfby as mr uh, surya was mentioning so yesterday we were fortunate enough to get a tweet on the uh, twitter from pmfby official handle that we used crop in to get the precise yield and crop detection in the gram panchayat right and we worked with them in four states uh, and the whole idea was you know the problem with surya uh, mr surya was mentioning that the window of harvesting or crop cutting experiment is very very small so within two months you have to get 7 million crop cutting experiment done which is which is not humanly possible there will be a lot of errors the uh, th those data punching will be i mean people will make some mistakes and by the time you revert back to the farmer in terms of payment it takes six months and eight months to resolve those dispute but when you use technology and and when we started interacting with the you know pmfby program one of the one of the uh, uh, concept note that time was can we reduce this seven million crop cutting experiment by 50 percent Scan technology intervene where we have to do eight crop cutting experiment in Gram Panchayat. Can we live with two experiments which bring down the cost? It will be easy to mobilize people and train people because you need half of the half of the people to do that job, and slowly get rid of this whole manual thing. So this is and and if you build those technologies, those levers uh, built on the data, this is possible. And we have demonstrated in uh, you know four to six states working very closely last two years with the government that this is possible and now they are trying to scale up scale it to the whole country so so possibilities has all, already been you know uh, 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 demonstrated how data can play a role i mean we are working with the uh, not uh, with the banks in india uh, where they are trying to underwrite a loan based on the data and that data is completely ai, AI driven so it, it it looks like the pixel it tells you which crop it is it doesn't have to go and talk to the farmer right <coughs> Uh, and we have been working on uh, with the banking in India, but also in LATAM, so uh, in Mexico, in Brazil, uh, where one of the bank is trying to lend to the farmers in Mexico, small farmers, farm holders, or uh, 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 you know, so one of the insurance companies uh, building a risk product and monitoring those risks on those farms. So I think th these possibilities are now becoming a reality, which we're talking, you know, uh, 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 six years, seven years back. And that is, that that will only become possible because you then have a critical mass of data, which gets generated on a platform, and then you feed into your deep learning to learn and produce results. And I am I am very bullish about this. And I think in next two to three years, you see the adoption curve will be very very high. So that's how I see the power of data playing a role in uh, shifting the you know <coughs> axis of agriculture in a very very positive dimension. Fantastic. I actually see five. Uh you know, dimensions in which this entire thing works. Yeah. On one side, the data is originated by a, a company like a weather company or something. Yeah. The other thing is you make it fit for yeah. consumption of the sector by the, uh, by the sector by putting in your own apps, your own technologies and uh, your own uh, applications. Then see, it is used by the banker and the banker is facilitated by the agriculturist. Uh, sorry, by the insurer who ensures that his uh, loans are, uh, you know, not going bad. Finally, it goes in the hands of the uh, farmer uh, 
uh, who can get the better yield out of it and all of yeah. you are facilitated by the government so it's a very interesting proposition by which the entire thing is and mr sipsen also shared some interesting perspective uh, uh, where we spoke about the bottlenecks that the organizations or the org uh, uh, agricultural sector is facing uh, or the lending sector is facing in getting their uh, you know uh, money back because the assessment of the crops does not happen in time if there are losses or loss assessment or yield ass assessment does not happen in time and this is one of the more, you know most important bottlenecks which in turn uh, creates an entire slowdown into the supply chain of finance of for this sector or insurance for the sector great uh, so let's move to rawl now rawl has been into the lending sector and uh, uh, he has been into this sector for quite some time rawl what is your experience on how uh this entire gamut of data can be used very effectively uh, as a new oil by the sector from bankers perspective what do you have to share i uh, thanks a lot mr nair and apologies i've been having some connection issues uh, getting in here uh, that's <laughs> <it's> normal <laughs> and while on the sub subject of technology and data uh, we still have these problems Absolutely. so let me just step back and and give you a slightly longer view of how credit has been playing out over the last uh, uh, five odd years and when one looks at the total bank credit that has uh, been uh, when you look at the rbi data uh, pre demon the credit growth was much was growing at a much larger clip uh, on a yoy basis of about 12 to 13% post demon uh, agri credit has industry wise taken a hit and it's fallen from that 13% level to 4 5% on an average bank credit has been in the the cagr for the last five years has been 9% uh whereas if you then you know divide that into public sector banks private sector banks private sector banks have a much smaller share but they have been growing at a much larger clip of uh, uh, so the cagr of private sector banks have been in the range of uh, 19% uh what is what is the difference that we have seen in the last few years is that uh, the traditional mode of agri funding has been kcc kcc is the largest form factor of 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 lending and that's a very uh, a basic tool wherein you use a dltc limit you multiply it by the acreage and you lend but over the years and what uh, you know what players like samunathi have also demonstrated is that agri lending can move from the pure vanilla kcc lending to actually plug into the agri value chain as as many players have plugged in and lending can also plug in into the various facets of the agri value chain uh where data and uh, you know krishna kumar has rightly said that a big uh, a big uh, kind of a, a dampener for lending in the agri space has also been this opaqueness uh, you get to know the farmer at the onset and even the bureau data was not very thick if you look at the last 3 uh, years there's been a sizable shift in the visibility of of farmer data on the bureau itself uh, today uh, we read up to 70% of of farmers have records on the bureau so that's that's one big data point that's moved forward uh but interestingly uh as as players like uh, krishna kumar have come in and ibm and and a whole lot of other host of other players this problem of opaqueness of underwriting farmers has been bridged to a large gap so you do that you do get their bureau data uh from the bureau houses which has also as i said the visibility has improved uh but after getting that data what else does a banker need the banker also needs to have data on how the crop is uh, the health of the crop how that that uh, uh, you know that that is improving visibility on that we also need to plug that in into our collection efforts etc and players like them have demonstrated that uh, using sat data using uh, remote data you can plug that back into at a very granular level at a, at a farmer level you can Uh, at a sorry unit level you can give a heads up to to the lender how the health of the crop is is uh, proceeding and based on that lenders can can then uh, look at uh, how they want to pace themselves for engagement with the farmer whether it is uh, an emergency loan that needs to be given to tide over a certain distress whether uh, if if the crop is good and ready to harvest and it's been good whether collections should follow uh, so my uh, uh, short answer to this would be we have traveled a fair distance and uh, the distance from from probably lenders having only a one 
trick horse lending through KCC, they can now uh, you know explore much more facets of lending, and data is is a key enabler for bankers to uh, 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 you know to leverage on in in exploring uh, new facets of lending, be it agri value chain or otherwise. Fantastic. In fact, we would come to that uh, part of it on what can be done. and what is the possibility for the future and how can we get better money in the hands of the agriculturists the bankers and insurers at a later question uh, we will move a little bit ahead from just agriculture and banking to that of disaster with uh, dr shekhar uh, dr shekhar good morning to you and uh, uh, you have been at the helm of affairs in managing disasters and uh, uh, getting the resilience uh, especially when there are disasters and whenever there is a disaster one of the top sectors that are so uh, affected is that of agriculture so how have you been effectively using the data not just the conventional way but the non conventional way to identify estimate mitigate and plan for uh resilience from disaster um thank you uh, well we have to look at it from two dimensions uh one is a post disaster scenario so one of the very uh, first things that we did uh, post 2018 floods was to ensure that the farmers get uh, adequate uh, relief assistance as envisaged in the national disaster response fund norms so uh, other than the crop loss expenditure there was also a lot of debris which got accumulated in farm lands which are by and large public areas so we utilized and we interpreted the entire norms in a manner that enables or enabled the government to ensure that over and above the normal crop loss assistance the farmers also got assistance for cleaning up their uh, premises they cleaning up their farm lands and uh, also for mulching so this this was actually an enabling angle of interpreting the whole norms now if you look at uh, the norms of national disaster response fund it is very stringent it is also very conjuice you know it should be put in double quotes uh, it doesn't actually uh, enable uh, easy access of uh, relief assistance and over the over over on top of that is always uh, existing bureaucracy which always considers that uh, relief assistance is a benevolence uh, our government was uh, by and large very different in approaching the whole thing uh, while it was very uh, very very adamant in ensuring that funds would go to the needy it also took a very liberal perspective towards providing assistance to farmers and you must also realize that in kerala other than the national disaster response fund and the amounts that are payable under the norms uh, kerala government also adds up a huge lot of amount to the whole thing to the whole relief assistance if you look at one coconut tree the central assistance if you boil it down to the number of coconut plants that can be grown in a hectare would come down to about 3 rupees per coconut tree and that's fully grown coconut tree and you can imagine how much time it takes and the state government gives thousand so the remaining 997 crore uh, rupees goes from the state budget so we are literally thousands of rupees ahead uh, in terms of our relief assistance to our farmers and and uh, remember this is not through any insurance scheme. we also have an insurance scheme while relief assistance is entitled for people insurance is more of a benevolence some people the government themselves puts in some money for insurance some farmers they themselves approach like agriculture corporation of india or all these organizations are here who provides relief assistance so basically this is how things are addressed uh now when it comes to enabling them using technology yes kerala is very progressive in terms of adoption of technology in various realms but if you look at agriculture in itself modernization as compared to what happened in punjab would be much lesser the reason is we are small and marginal farmers the holdings are less than 
uh, 0.5 hectares. So it's very small. Large farmland, by and large, estates, you know, the, the plantation crops. But if you look at farming in itself, seasonal farming in itself, they are small and marginal farmers who cannot afford to take up this uh, this problem. Uh, who, who cannot actually adopt technology as it is now for cultivation. So there has to be uh, an approach towards how very localized technology is available at cheap cost, which are accessible to SMF. This is the challenge. And that is where I also look for providing very granular uh, information on weather and weather complexities. I mean, the India Meteorological Department do give us a very broad perspective of what can happen in a district or a taluk. If you are going to do precision farming, you want to get to that stage where a farmer would like to apply resources and fertilizers based on what is conducive for a certain climatology, then you need very localized, disaggregated information of weather. <laughs> so that is, a, uh, uh, that, that is also a reason why we are looking at private weather companies like IBM Weather Company or SkyMet or Earth Networks to gather in more data and make it available through uh, processing as a alert system. So that farmers know about activities, farmers understands uh, what actually is uh, in stock for them in the coming days. Uh, you must also realize that Kerala's uh, uh, productivity in terms of soil capacity is very low. Not a great place to cultivate. Uh, we have uh, by and large an acidification going on in the soils as, well, as we understand. And that also uh, is a challenge. Now, knowing all this, the, the attempt here in Kerala from the agriculture department is now to create agroeconomic zones where every agroeconomic zone will be provided with a certain prescription, specific prescription as to what are the most suitable crops and how to grow them and all that. So uh, the whole agriculture sector itself is post 2018 floods have to be reinvented in an agroeconomic zone basis, wherein the soil productivity and uh, uh, weather would have certain similarities, and then the growable crops have a certain, uh, uh, the, the crops would also be of certain types which kind of fits and suits that condition. So there is a change that is being attempted. Uh, we also are trying to depopulate uh, highly uh, disaster prone areas. Kerala is probably the only state which has a vulnerability linked relocation plan. We pay about 10 lakhs to people who want to leave their highly vulnerable area and move down to more secure areas, but then retain the original property for cultivation. They can't just live there. That's the only thing that we insist. So probably over time we will see uh, like probably in Italy or wherever, you would recluster all the population at places and leave the vulnerable areas. Uh, leave the vulnerable areas for the uh, disasters to happen because you can't stop landslides and floods. They have to happen. They bring in silt, sick clay, and uh, much needed nutrition, and they mix the soil. They change the uh, the soil chemistry. So. This basically is something that we have to really keep in mind. Uh, it's a complex process, disaster management as such is, uh, because it touches upon all different aspects of uh, life. And there is an earnest effort to use technology here. Uh, you are all welcome to come and see what we do. But uh, as of now, I conclude with it. And uh, Mr. Babu, I also have you also have to excuse me because I have a call from my minister's office. Now, uh, yeah. thank you for inviting me to, to, to talk. Thank you very much for sharing your perspective. Uh, I think you have already uh, put in a lot of uh, you know 
uh, points into the discussion right from talking about uh, you know how technology is being used at a granular level at a panchayat level or at a field level and a coconut tree level so we have a lot of scope to start discussing uh, those particular things a lot of this is a part of the conversation that we are going to have uh, uh, babu if i can interrupt you all should actually look at this nice video uh by the man who created uh, microsoft azure uh, uh there's a very famous video called connected cows okay connected cows just look at it it's it's a microsoft azure initiative uh, as an anecdote to it uh, suraj is my brother so don't think that i am as geeky as him he created azure he was a uh amazon's vice president and then azure ceo okay uh, just google connected cows he will tell you how at a cows level weather data makes a lot of sense and how many steps a cow may, makes and based on that how much will be the milk production effect affected so yeah that that's what we should achieve that's that's the goal to look forward to. great great i am already seeing that on the video so maybe we will play it at a, a yes a, yes you should do that it's it's really interesting to listen to it yeah yeah definitely thank you, thank you very much dr shikh right. great uh hi uh himanshu i think you have a lot lot and lot of dope to give now because uh, you have heard the banker you have heard the insurer you have heard the technology provider supply chain guy uh what is very clear from uh, dr shikh perspective is they are looking at a technology which is cheap and cost effective get accurate and with uh, advent of technologies like analytics coming into picture with ad advent of apps coming into picture apps are i think the biggest uh, advantage to happen to the human kind that way to bring power in the hands of every single person and then use analytics on those apps and with open api there is a lot of possibility to connect each of these apps to various uh, uh, technologies also uh, sorry uh, to various uh, you know segments as well so how are you what is your story about how is uh, technology being used innovatively in this sector so i think uh, uh, well we have a privilege of working with some of the uh, uh, organizations who are speaking today as well as some of them who are listening uh and i think in last 3 years of our journey uh, we went out to solve one problem in india for an agriculture use was can we predict rains can we predict rains correctly and can we predict the volume of water in which what time span it will come to the agricultural land at a 500 meter square level um i would not say we have solved the problem but if you look at probabilistically we hit at around 70% plus accuracy most of the times uh now we can claim 90% at times and it rains and waxes based on the vagaries of weather um so what we have been trying to do is certain models of technology work internationally where there's a great sensor network on the ground now unfortunately uh, we don't have those capabilities enough on the ground where a lot of investment has happened so what could be the art of possible and this is where the whole power of ibm came in where we got the ibm cloud uh, from a capability perspective we got the ibm uh, power uh, capability from a hardware standpoint and we build a special model called ibm graph which is today and powering data back into uh, our users and the result is really giving confidence to these uh, partners of ours and their end customers because we largely do b2b uh, from an agriculture insurance banking perspective um, and that is something which we are trying to solve now there are other opportunities which come in in agri insurance if you look at crop specific insurance so a banana crop is sensitive to wind speed then you have rice which is sensitive to flooding then you have a uh, certain uh, you know unique um, you know uh, vegetables and fruits which are unique to certain patterns of weather so what is that individually we can do so the government has opened floodgates with 
crop level insurance, uh, which is time bound and crop specific, region specific. Now that brings a huge opportunity for safeguard of farmers' interests, and it becomes builds a huge technology challenge for people like us and our partners like Cropman, uh, you know, and Samanuti to you know show in the value to the farmers. And that's where the great advisory comes in from these partners of ours who bring in their agrarian skills to the fort. So, so, and when you look at the data chain to give a solution, each data sets have to be trusted with a certain, I wouldn't say pinch of salt, but the probability of it being right. So if the weather is 70% and then the agrarian advisory is another 80% on top of it, and then the market links are assurance of 90% of sales value and good proceeds, you're building the value chain to get farmer from uh, a little to a higher probability of make a gain. So I think we are uh, very, very uh, challenged and excited to be part of that whole um, ecosystem. And, and this is where we are. So I'll stop here. But but just, just a message, the data is really uh, getting to a point to be trustable. And it is backward forward. So on our technology side, we are doing our bit. Uh, on the government side, I think they are bringing farmers uh, to uh, not a geo code rather than a phone number and a, uh, a KYC level. And and the twain is going to meet sometime. And, uh, and I like how Krishna uh, uh, and Anil says that, you know, that the confidence on this whole journey is really happening. I mean, there's a great example of PMFBY. Uh, the capability on crop cutting, which Krishna's team has shown, uh, it's a huge, huge gap which has been filled literally. Uh, you know, so so I think all of us are working together to uh, solve an extremely complex problem. Um, and let me tell you, it is more complex than COVID, because COVID is one problem, but we have similar problems with every crops. When you look at uh, their life and their sustenance and their great quality growth. So, so I think we are on that journey, and and uh, very excited to be in partnership with a lot of these uh, problem solvers uh, on the on the floor. Thanks, Imanshu. Let me get a little bit on the lending perspective with Rawl and Anil. Uh, first of all, uh, Rawl, uh, we have been seeing a lot of uh, necessity or obligation for the bankers to lend to the agricultural sector on one side. Uh, when I was checking with Mr. Swaroop Saxena, I was given an understanding that almost 99% uh, of the loans that are uh, to be given to the farming sector are uh, insurable. That is on one side. Now, apart from just uh, being an obligation-oriented lending business, okay, where uh, there is a uh, limited scope to expand or make it profitable or innovate, how are the banks and financial institutions or the lenders kind of trying to innovate into the segment? I'll try from the lender's perspective from your side first and then supply chain perspective with Anil later. How are the financial institutions innovating themselves and providing additional information to their customers, empowering their farmer customers, not just to take money or borrow money and uh, give it back, but also to actually be a partner in their business and help them grow this business and put more money into there. So uh, I'll take your uh, your point on, on the fact that, yes, uh, uh, you know, if you look at 10 years back, agri-lending was primarily probably the lens that lenders consumed was from a PSL and regulatory lens. And the whole approach was that way, uh, specifically for those banks who did not probably have uh, a very strong rural reach and were more metro urban centric uh, banks, they always found it a challenge to uh, address the rural and specifically the agri customers' uh, requirements. And and hence, they would use shortcuts on on lending, etc., uh, and an obligation based approach. That was a lens probably consumed uh, a decade ago. Uh, probably some lenders still have that approach, but I, I believe there's been a there's been quite a shift in the approach of looking as uh, agri lending only from an obligation, but uh, now as a pure commercial, uh, you know, opportunity. And maybe I can uh, speak from our uh, our experience over the last decade. Uh, when when you look at uh, some of the basic requirements, if you've got to address this segment, uh, you need to 
be invested in the slightly longer run you can't look at it from a short lens of one two years and if you're looking at being committed to this sector uh, lenders will have to know that it's a manpower intensive it is a, a deep geography kind of an assignment so you'll have to invest one in in uh, in in manpower and you'd also have to uh, make sure that you don't uh, juxtapose an urban or a metro operating model on this model right uh, so you can't have a banker's uh, timing of a 10 to 3 approach to this business uh, you'll have to have maybe human uh, resource practices that are supportive of lend of uh, of uh, of addressing this segment so your agri officers or your microfinance officers will have to get used to starting the day at seven o'clock uh, you know having a slight break in between and then maybe extending to a longer uh, uh, tenure in the evening because that's when the farmer or, or you know even a, a, a microfinance typical borrower uh, finds it suitable to interact with their uh, with their bankers so one is the whole approach uh, not using an urban and metro uh, approach on the on the rural side that's number one Number two, where banks have, and uh, you know, I could speak for my, uh, 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 though it's blackout period and I'm not supposed to give you uh, hard data, but what I can leave is today, the agri lending outfit in Axis Bank is one of the highest ROA businesses. Mm -hmm. And why would that have happened over the period of three, four years? I wouldn't say it's happened without a lot of macro level support. If you look at the last four years, the way in which the whole Jam Trinity has come together, whether it is the ability for us to uh, maybe lower the amount of manpower dependency, this business still uh, you need to do doorstep delivery. Uh, but how can you deliver it smarter? Whether the enabling environment has become much more conducive with the uh, other coming into play, with the, the mobile adopting uh, adoption of, of the end customer, and uh, you know the proliferation of bank accounts, right, Jandar? Uh, with all these three coming together, the cost of delivery for bankers have significantly reduced. So OPEX, which was predominantly very high to serve this sector, has taken has shrunk uh, to a large extent uh, uh, because you know we can uh, uh, we can push money directly into their accounts. They do not have to you do not have to sometimes even uh, make doorstep collection because they can go to uh, today. I have BC points wherein they can go to any of the BC points and and deposit their money some of them can even on a mobile make their payments uh, so obligation was of the past today with with one uh, uh, banks making the effort to understand their customers better uh, technology as i said the whole jam trinity coming together has has been much more useful and uh, 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 i would also think that uh, you know the, the partnerships which have played a huge role uh, NBFC, MFI, NBFCs, uh, players like uh, Anil have, have kind of proved uh, that, uh, you know, having a focused agri NBFC, he's also proved that uh, you don't need to just give KCCs uh, in this segment. Uh, so I'll just conclude quickly, Mr. Nair, by saying that these are the, uh, and, and I would also say that uh, today, most lenders don't look at, at agri customers only from an agri customer lens, but more holistically. They look at their entire uh, uh, requirements be it as a consumer so agri customer as a borrower versus agri customer as a consumer meeting all their requirements so whether it is for their uh, you know consumption requirements or whether they need to borrow for a home improvement loan etc and lenders have have also started looking at uh, you know other financial products be it insurance be it uh, deposits be it payments and the more holistic approach has made this uh, approach not from a compulsion but from a pure commercial uh, uh, opportunity fantastic. that shift fantastic. has happened uh, so quickly what we will also do is uh, we will request uh, uh, anil also to share from a supply chain perspective how do you see this then we will go immediately into the insurance sector and then after that i want to talk to namdev also who is from hdfc bank and they have done some fantastic work in this area but uh, first over to you anil uh, from your side how this can be used in the supply chain side and from the risk management side no uh, rao has covered beautifully the perspective of uh, uh, a lender in looking at uh, customizing the proposition to agriculture and not uh, look at one size fits all the moment you bring in the value chain proposition the dimension of who you are changes 
uh, and and what i mean by that is uh, an entity like samunati cannot assume the role of a pure play lender it has to go beyond being a lender it has to you know transcend the you know the dimension of just lending business because lending business is usually a product led approach is usually you know a, a, a you know risk management philosophy that looks at how do i protect myself from the borrower the philosophy that community has for risk management is how do i understand what are your risks as my borrower can i mitigate those risks so that i am not exposed to those risks in other words my money with the borrower is as risky as borrower's money which he has to repay if we are able to mitigate the risks of the borrower willingly i am getting protected from it so the risk management philosophy has to go beyond protecting myself from the borrower but to protect the borrower from the risk and that is where what is referred to as an internal player in the value chain comes into picture in a value chain proposition and that is a significant shift that we as samunati made because all of us in samunati come from banking background and the senior management in samunati has about 600 years of banking experience so what we have seen is how do we go beyond lending as an end to lending being a means lending being important but not sufficient right uh, and and that is where a supply chain or a value chain proposition comes into picture the moment you take that as a non negotiable and a philosophy then what are the aspects that have to complement the access to finance become relevant from samunathi's dimension we refer to this as an internal player in the value chain how do you bring in inputs that are relevant and in a timely manner how do we bring in the advisory services that make the process of cultivation safer and how do we bring in market linkages post harvest so that the data the the, the additional that a farmer can make will become substantially accentuated because you are not expected or supposed to sell soon after harvest when the prices are the lowest these are the few dimensions that you know a, a, a value chain proposition enables us to bring in and there again entities uh, that are in the data space entities that are in the you know in the space that uh, you know uh, give us data to make informed decisions play a significant role let me just take one sliver because agriculture is a big sector and it took it took actually four months for me to inform some of our stakeholders that agriculture is a sector crop loan is one part of it whereas most of the people equate agriculture and crop loan same and the weather companies are making this most vulnerable part of agriculture better mitigated from the risk dimension what is it that most of us as lenders would want and what is it most insurer you know insurers would want one is there enough data to make informed choices so when a crop loan is being given to a farmer do we have the data of what was grown in the last 5 years on that piece of land which is what we love in the work that himanshu and uh, uh, you know krishna are doing through their respective entities and have spent years in understanding what is it can we get a real time online view of what is happening today and all of us know that agriculture is a tranched investment you, know, you have to make investment 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 and then harvest correct to make multiple investments you need to have access to multiple tranches of money fantastic and how the disbursement of those tranched money can happen and imagine the risk mitigation that happens when i as a lender can take a view of what is the stage of the crop today before i release the money and what can be expected from the harvest after based on the current information fantastic i think that that goes in that's a great uh, way of summing up how you have to create a risk free ecosystem rather than just having a single party because everyone is interlinked with each other ultimately true, true. Uh, true. and that's a very great way of putting things uh, forward we have all spoken about risk we have spoken about underwriting now let us talk to mr swaroop uh, mr saxena as is saxena uh, mr saxena you have been from the risk mitigation area two three important areas that let us try to find out from you especially is from the risk mitigation angle what is supposed to be done or how the insurers are looking at uh, you know bettering the risk mitigation angle on the other side with all this pradhan mantri 
फसल बीमा योजना अ लॉट ऑफ यू नो रिस्क आर एनीवेज बीइंग कवर्ड बाय फॉर द फार्मर्स एंड थिंग्स लाइक दैट व्हाट आर द काइंड ऑफ एडवांसमेंट्स दैट कैन हैपन इन द एरिया ऑफ इंश्योरेंस अकॉर्डिंग टू यू स्पेशली यूजिंग ऑल दिस इंफॉर्मेशन दैट इज अवेलेबल एंड हाउ वेल कैन यू गो बियॉन्ड जस्ट ensuring to that of creating a better ecosystem crop insurance is uh, one of the risk management tool for both the bankers as well as the farmer because uh, the scheme was compulsory till uh, in the season and now it has been made voluntary for the farmers depending upon the demand from the farmer so since that it was compulsory for the lonely farmers means so uh, the farmers who used to get loan from the banking channels or the notified crop the state so whatever loan was being dispersed by the farmer uh, to the farmers it was being secured to this crop interest mechanism on the other hand it was the security for the farmer because it used to cover it cover it, it covers the risk from the sowing till harvesting and even on the pm fy it is 15 days beyond the harvesting period that post harvest losses are also covered so whatever farmer got as a form of claim first it went to the bank towards the repayment of their loan so it was secured it still a security for the bank so what i would request the banking channel that even for scheme has been paid voluntary it is in their own interest to make aware the farmers about existence of this scheme so that whatever loan they are paying to the farmers is secured so it is a security for both banking as well as the farmers the second thing is all the risks from the sowing till harvest are covered under this pradhan mantri fasal bima yojana and we have try to cover maximum number of crops and the pfpy the only requirement is that crop should have been grown in such a manner that the crop cutting can be done and the yield distribution can be made for those crops but the second thing is even if the area is such the yeah, area is very small that yield distribution is not possible or requisite number of properties cannot be done then the crop can be covered alternatively under the weather risk crop insurance scheme so the risk under the entire life cycle of the crop are covered or can be covered by in either of these two schemes of course we are also having some in house product especially for the grapes or the mango or the banana so, so those schemes are also in operation or uh, under those schemes Uh, rest of the crops can be covered so that can be assessed through the use of technology and uh, we can help the farmers in the shortest possible time uh, even the we are uh, the government is trying to introduce the technology in the form of getting uh, uh, satellite or maybe the drone for assessment of the losses so uh, i think uh, that can be very helpful to both the insurers as well as the farmers as the bankers because if the farmers get the money early then this uh, bank's loan is secured bank and the farmer is eligible for the next round of loan and he doesn't uh, become a defaulter so uh, that is the condition so probably i am sure the ecosystem is working towards it and all of you can uh, join hands together in putting such a wonderful ecosystem into place and uh, moving forward in the future also we would like to create some such kind of forums where agriculture specialist uh, uh, and uh, technology specialist lenders and insurers and commodity exchanges and traders can also come together and jointly work out how this beautiful ecosystems can be created further so thank you very much Thank you. Thank, Thank you everyone. You. Bye bye. Thank you Babu. Thanks everyone. Thank